This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green Think Tech Hawaii. My guest today is Cesar Gaciola, Executive Director of the Walter Cameron Center in Kahului, Maui. We don't have an image of Cesar to show you, but take my word for it, he's a pretty good looking guy. And turns out he's a very serious runner, so he's also an athletic looking guy. So welcome to the show, Cesar. Hi, how are you? Thank you for the, for the invite. Ah, oh, and here's an image. I told you he was a good-looking guy here. Very good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so by way of introduction, uh, Cesar came here from uh, Mexico many years ago as an agricultural worker. And you wouldn't think that was the most promising start in the world, but this is America, and the American dream comes true. So Cesar worked his way up, 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 and now from agricultural worker, executive director of the Cameron Center uh, in Kahului. And those of you who are familiar with the center know that it's big and it serves many, many community functions. I was over talking to the American Institute of Architects a few months ago on Maui and our meeting and our refreshments came from the Walter Cameron Center. So let's uh, go to the first slide and Cesar, I will let you take, take it from here as we uh, follow the slides. We'll first do the Walter Cameron uh, Center. If you want to tell us a little bit about, uh, oh, you know what, Let, let's go to the next slide and you can talk a little about, about what the Cameron Center does. Okay, oh, no. sure, definitely. Uh, as you can see, our, our mission is to serve, incubate, support, and accelerate social good in our community. Mm -hmm. So since uh, 1973, we've been housing um, nonprofit agencies, and many of them continue with us, and some of them have gotten into uh, better themselves, and now they have their own facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is uh, the, Ma the MAC, Maui Arts and Cultural Center, and now they have uh, their, their own uh, beautiful facility. So we, we help the community that way. We serve nonprofits who in turn serve the community. And let, let's go to the next slide that gives an outline of one of the many, many nonprofits that, that you host over there. Yeah, wow. uh, we house currently 16 uh, agencies, and you can see uh, from... American Red Cross, American Cancer Society, uh, Nakeki Malia, the Chamber of Commerce. Anyway, so we have uh, 16 of them, and uh, we're very uh, happy that we can that we can continue to do that and offer services for all these agencies. Yeah, uh, you can we... see on uh, slide uh, number four where we list the different services. We provide uh, office and program oh, space. Oh, this is on the ne next slide. meeting facilities. And we do have electric car charging stations. We provide Wi-Fi for the entire uh, complex. And then we have some uh, equipment the agencies come and borrow and, you know, they're able to use a like, laptop, projectors, and tables, chairs, whatever, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all know that nonprofits continually have financial issues, and you're just uh, setting them up with uh, everything they could possibly want, I assume for a very good uh, good price for them, something they can afford. And they, in turn, reach out very often to the less advantaged people in the community. Yes, yeah, that, that's correct. So that way they're able to concentrate on their, on their services because we we provide uh, the space and we just charge one fee, you know, so they don't have to worry about paying electricity or coming areas or parking or anything like that. Everything is included in mm -hmm. one fee. And so that way they have their hands on to provide the services to the community. Yeah, let, let them focus on what they're good at. And I see yes, that the electric correct. car charging station is also there. 
and Wi-Fi access. I don't know how many people have told me, oh, my goodness, I need Wi-Fi access. Here, here it is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the thing of today. Yeah? Everybody mm -hmm. is into uh, technology, Wi-Fi, uh, Internet, and social yeah, media. Yeah. yeah. And so let's go to the next slide, uh, the challenge. Oh, no, this is a, a slide that show, shows different groups, uh, Cesar. You're, there, there's a slide with little, little kids enjoying themselves, somebody lecturing, somebody serving food. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, the pictures with um, the different activities and events that take place at the center. And mm -hmm. so it's just, just some photos in there and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, Gives you an idea so, of the diversity. Um, uh, on the challenge, uh, you can see, you know, um, we got to one point, and this is back in 2008, when we, uh, looking at the facility, we saw that we, we had some challenge on us, you know, the, <laughs> the electrical systems, the AC, the plumbing, windows, doors, landscaping, uh, things needed to be uh, updated, and so we kind of started taking note of that, and we said, wow, our water heaters are, you know, mm -hmm. rusty, and it, they don't work properly, and things like that. Is that the, so I we, see a, a big rusty piece of equipment, is that a water heater, or? Th that's a water heater, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> the remains of a water heater, yeah. Yeah, we have uh, eight of those <laughs> in the in the the complex, mm. and so we we do have a uh, few showers, and then we also have six kitchens. So, so we need hot water. Yeah, <laughs> I would think so. Wow, that is. So you yeah, really so had your hands full when you when to get started, J just to bring the level of service up up to uh, a decent standard there. Yeah, that, that's correct. You know, um, you know, after 34 years, and and you know, as a nonprofit, I guess you kind of realize it. You know, you've been busy providing the service, mm -hmm. but then it's time for the facility to get a fresh coat of paint and and replace some of the equipment and things like that. Then we can continue to to do what we've been doing in, in those past 34 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I, I know what yeah. it, when when we get into this, we're going to talk about newer equipment being much much more uh, energy efficient. But first, let's let's go to the next yeah. slide. Uh, projects up to or oh no, th things to do here. Th these are what yeah, uh, so, y yeah, you do here. Things yeah. to do was was really quick to uh, go ahead and and uh, list the things that we needed to do kind of to put a, a, a plan together, basically, and say, this is what we need, kind of like a, your list of things. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of departed from, from there. Mm -hmm. And but basically, we got into uh, doing projects. So up to today, we have uh, uh, done about $10 million in, in, in various projects. And so we did remodel 12 restrooms. Uh, replace all the electric, all the plumbing, everything inside. Mm -hmm. uh, we refar refurbish uh, 25,000 square of, of uh, interior ceiling. Updated uh, electrical system. We re we had an old transformer and we got rid of the transformer. Uh, we purchased a new system and, and gave it to the utility company. So now they own it. It's, uh, it's not yeah. in our side. Yeah, now let, we, let them take it. care of it. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have to take care of it anymore. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. That and is so an ambitious We remodeled four kitchens. We replaced uh, the large, uh, 156 large single pane windows and uh, to the low E double pane glass. Mm -hmm. So that's going to mm -hmm. save us a lot of uh, electricity. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah agree. and <laughs> we also replaced uh, 28 handling units. We, st we did the uh, hydro coating for the rooftop. I like that. Uh, we did flooring, uh, removed the uh, carpet. Uh, we replaced our water heaters and uh, things of that nature. Whew. And then you probably see the slide there with uh, the energy efficiency initiative. We got into uh, lighting retrofitting. So, yeah, we let, let's go to the, the yeah, there, there we 
mm-hmm. into a T8, and now we're actually looking into a T5. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know how fast technology changes. <laughs> and so with that, just, just lighting retrofitting alone, that was a 30,000 kilowatt hours that we save in, per year. Mm-hmm. We also replaced our um, chiller, our AC chiller. We went from 100 tons to 125 ton unit with a um, smart turbo core, which is all magnetic. It doesn't use oil. And mm-hmm. that alone saves us 100,000 kilowatts uh, per year. Yeah, and one, yes. one thing I like about retrofits like this is when you get this newer high-tech equipment, not only does it reduce energy use, but it delivers more comfort and better health to the building occupants. Definitely, definitely. And when you say comfort, you just write about that. Uh, our old chiller was really uh, noisy, real mm-hmm. loud. Our new chiller uh, is so quiet. You can have a conversation uh, next to the equipment. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's just very pleasing that uh, we don't have the loud noise throughout the day. Yeah, yeah, that, that's called uh, improved lifestyle. Definitely, definitely, yeah. yeah. And then we installed two, uh, two PV, two photovoltaics. Uh, we did a 107 kilowatts and a 15.3 uh, kilowatt systems. Uh, we did those through a power purchase agreement. Mm-hmm. And so they've been producing uh, power for us for the past uh, eight years now. Wow. So they and produce uh, about one third of the power we consume. It, it comes from the, from the PV. Yeah, and power purchase refers to the fact that you didn't have to put one penny up front. The installer did that and then sells the kilowatt hours back to you, I believe, at 15.3 cents a kWh. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. so, so that's, that's what mm-hmm. it is. They, uh, they start us with a, a, a lower, and then we have an escalation rate mm-hmm. uh, per year. I, I believe it's about, about 2%, and so, uh, which is much lower, you know, the contract, the, um, the, the power that we consume yeah, from the utility yeah, company. Yeah. And so you kind of have an idea of what you're going to be able to uh, to, to expand because mm-hmm. it's, you have the price already for the next 20 years. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So, so you're able to budget that, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't go up and down. It, I mean, it goes up, but not, you know. Now, it, at not two, in, 2% a year com- compared to the volatility of uh, oil that's that's yeah. nothing yeah. yeah so it's something that we can we can manage yeah and, and knowing and mm-hmm. and so anyway so that was the, the pv systems and and now of course uh, we're getting into uh the, the projects that we're working on right now mm-hmm. and so we currently working on a third pv system mm-hmm. we are in a uh, more pv and this time we are in uh, energy storage yeah, so that, we are in a, 147 uh, kilowatt hours wow. with uh, energy storage for 244 kilowatts. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to work into the same uh, same thing. It's going to be also a power purchase agreement, which there is no down payment or money up front mm-hmm. or deposits or anything, mm-hmm. or anything like that. So now how is this storage going to work? You probably, in the middle of the day, you've got all of this uh, sunlight coming down. So you're yep. storing some of that or all of that in this system here? So yeah, so during the day we're going to provide the, the, the power is going to go into the storage. The energy is going to go into the storage. And we're going to use the power uh, nighttime or in the mornings between 6 and 9 o'clock in the morning when our kilowatt rate goes uh, high in demand because mm-hmm. our AC is coming on. Mm-hmm. So we're going to turn it on in the morning. That way we are able to control our demand with the utility company. Mm-hmm. And have you reached a power or, or a time of use uh, rate with, uh, with Miko since, since you're uh, smoothing the load like this? Yeah, so so with uh, this new system, it's going to be around uh, 20 cents per mm-hmm. kilowatt. Mm-hmm. And so, again, it's going to be uh, uh, for 20 years. It's going to have an escalation rate of, uh, I believe it's 1.5. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. per year. And so we estimating a savings of about half a million dollars in those 20 years. Yeah, yeah. All yes, at uh, no upfront cost to you. It's just the agreement no, no, between. Yeah. No upfront cost or no payments or anything mm-hmm, like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I, I should so, point out that since you're one of the large users on Maui, you are doing what's called smoothing the load, where when Miko is getting too much sunlight, you're absorbing a lot of that, making good use of it, and then... Miko has an evening peak between 5 p.m. 9 p.m. and instead of their having to put on extra generators, this is when this battery kicks in and reduces that peak load. That makes yes. life much much easier for uh, for Miko. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Yep. So it's going to mm-hmm. be able to smooth the the peak at the the morning and also in the mm-hmm. p.m. AM and PM. Yeah, and the, and the end result there is that Miko is using more solar power and less fossil fuel. Yes, that's yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so our goal is to reduce 100,000 uh, kilowatt hours by the end of 2018. Wow. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. so, so that definitely is going to take us uh, closer to uh, 75% uh, renewable power. And we're going to be probably about 25% uh, from ECO, from the utility company. Mm-hmm. Very ambitious yeah. goal. And that yeah. certainly helps. Uh, you know, I'm a state employee, and our motto is 100% clean energy by the year 2045. And this takes us, is a big, big, big step in, in that direction. Yeah, so we're getting closer and closer. Uh, currently, we're working on... a in a new gray lighting audit, we mm-hmm. we uh, mm-hmm. doing a site survey for our our lamps, our night lights, and everything to do with uh, fixtures. And so we're gonna um, be renovating our, our T8s now into probably T5s, mm-hmm. and also reduce uh, power consumption there. We also gonna be replacing our parking uh, lights to LED lighting. Mm-hmm. And then we're looking into painting the, the exterior of the facility uh, using what is what is called a friendly environmental uh, uh, paint mm-hmm. and also takes less heat from the environment. Absolutely. That's something near and dear to my heart because I'm the yes. energy codes guy. And Hawaii yep. is the only state in the nation that gives credit not only for reflective roofs, where when the sun's radiation hits the roof, most of it bounces back into the atmosphere, but we give credit for reflective walls. And yeah. this has, and this is exactly what, what you're going to be uh, doing, and the reflective walls issues has uh, attracted the attention of several national energy efficiency groups, including uh, Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory out of uh, Berkeley, California, and they have established a cool walls center, and Hawaii is the the guinea pig, because there's more and more people like you who are going to be installing cool walls, and now we get to monitor just how much uh, energy they save, and we reduce the... It it makes so much sense, and of course, uh, the savings too, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Because your building's being cooler, and so you mm-hmm. use less electricity to power your AC. Precisely. And yeah, then so, I, I would uh, go back uh, so to So my the... next uh, oh, slide but... goes into uh, the lessons uh, learned. Yes, And so yes. you can see there uh, we uh, we stole uh, multiple electrical meters, and it's going to go about yeah, let's, divided, let's go to divided the next low slide, easy to, yeah. conquer, to conquer easier to have others pay for the energy mm-hmm. they use, easier to control and locate uh, fault equipment. And so so we learn uh, all those lessons. Of course, uh, develop a maintenance plan. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I keep emphasizing here, it doesn't matter what kind of plan it is, but whatever plan you're talking about, it needs to be easy. It needs to mm-hmm. be mm-hmm. short and concise. Don't, you know, don't elaborate too much into... Uh, all these manuals that people sometimes produce and nobody reads, they mm-hmm, just kind of mm-hmm. see it around. Um, 
keep the you need to keep the facility uh, top shape. Uh, provide training to staff. Anytime you see training available, uh, you know, work with your staff and see, you know, whose turn is to to uh, take training, who can take training. Uh, mm-hmm. Divide the work among your staff and the contract work. Uh, that's that's a big one there because. You know, when when you have a contractor providing a service to you, they work from an agency where, you you know, if you call the plumber, the plumber has the right tools, has the right equipment, they have the license, they have the training, and Mm -hmm. they're constantly updating themselves. They're constantly Mm -hmm. taking classes and things like that. So you don't want to try to create a plumber, you know, within your your staff because then you're going to have to buy special tools that you're gonna use only once or twice a month, mm-hmm. and the plumber using those those tools every day, it makes a difference. Absolutely, yeah. And same thing with the electrician, same thing with the the AC uh, technician. Mm-hmm. So you know, some of the trades is better just to uh, call somebody and work a, a maintenance contract with them, and your staff no need to be uh, doing some of the specific work. That you might need to buy mm-hmm. expensive tools or get them into uh, special training classes or things things like that. Precisely. You know, so you always gotta make sure that the load is balanced. You know. And then, by hiring the specialists like this, you can also reduce the size of your staff. You don't have to have people yeah. trained to do be part-time plumbers and part-time electricians or whatever. And when you're doing something part-time, you tend to forget some of the lessons you have to re-remember when you get back to that uh, type of task. Whereas you yes. point out, the trades, and, they, they do this every day. They know exactly what they're doing. And you know what is uh, the other one? Safety. Mm-hmm. Sa- safety is a big one because, like you say, they don't use a tool every day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they forget to uh, turn on the switch or turn off the mm-hmm. switch or unplug it or whatever. So safety is a big one, and yeah, so if they're yeah. not doing it every day, might as well don't get yourself into trouble. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, we're on the uh, lessons learned continued uh, slide right now. Yeah. Yeah, what, what's so, the newest and greatest out there so far? Yeah. And then, of course, you, you get into all the OSHA stuff and all the requirements and everything. And so anyway, so, so you, it's, it's things that you, gotta, that you have to think and say, okay, should I have somebody in the staff, or should I just grab the phone and call mm-hmm. so-and-so company or X company or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. So that, that was a big one for us. We yeah. save a lot of money through, you know, making making those decisions. Yeah. So and then, it, of course, uh, you know, compare facts at the local, or the national, and international levels. What mm-hmm. other, other uh, facilities are you seeing in California or New York or whatever, and, and learn from them, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, energy efficiency, yeah. uh, sustainability, communications, mm-hmm. visit other te- other facilities. Uh, anytime uh, I go to the mainland, I always make make it upon mm-hmm. myself to go and visit a large facility and just to see what they're doing yeah. and how they're yeah. doing things. Mm-hmm. Is, is there one thing that I can learn from them that perhaps I can implement here? So that, that has yeah. helped me a lot. Yeah, when, when I go into a building that is obviously poorly managed, I ask about the staff, well, how, how much training have they had? Oh, yeah. well, we don't have any budget for training. <laughs> and uh, you, you know the yeah. consequences of that, yeah. So, yeah, so well, one of my friends was, was calling that the, the bubble. You know how people think to work, and, and sometimes we get trapped in these in this bubbles. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm I live in this place, so I'm gonna do things my way, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And so you gotta open up the bubble and, and kind of go and see what 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 other people are doing. You know, what mm-hmm. what your neighbor is doing, what the people that lives across the street is doing. Mm-hmm. So you can learn from them, and you can innovate. You know, well, so so we gotta break the bubble and just go outside. Precisely. You know? uh, again, I. Uh see the a, a difference in the trades. I see somebody doing something very right, and I ask for their background, 
And they generally have been to the mainland, to one of the more progressive states or progressive cities, and they've gained a lot of experience there. Whereas somebody who just keeps on doing what he was taught to do 10 years ago is not doing <laughs> yeah. su such a good yeah. job. Yeah, so, and yeah. then just the last steps here is uh, schedule equipment shut off, uh, purchase energy efficient equipment, keep an eye on the AC, mm -hmm. thermostat, turning lights off mm -hmm. when leaving the room. You know, it's, it's kind of the, the old, uh, old stuff perhaps, but uh, it's a small savings, you know. Mm -hmm. Every time you turn off the light, you might you might think, oh, I'm only going to save 10 cents, but, you know, you go out of the room 100 times a month, mm -hmm. and it adds up, you know, it really quick. Well, and it's now one person, you know, you're talking about two, three, four, five hundred people. So it really quick adds up, you know, it, yeah. it works. Plus, plus so when the lights are off, we the, think it's, it's too the, the light small, of the lamp is but extended. But actually, it makes a difference, the, the, those little things. Absolutely. And the more the lights are off, the less heat is generated, the easier the life is for the uh, AC system. Yeah. And so, you know, so anyway, you just keep looking, uh, evaluating yourself. Uh, what is the biggest expense? Uh, you know, what everybody... Uh, Talks about what can you do, mm -hmm. walk the property on a weekly basis, keep people informed of any changes, keep yourself in the loop of things, always uh, open communication and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that has done a, a quite a tremendous impact for us here at the, the center. Absolutely. What, what kind of savings were you talking about? I, I know there was an uh, estimate of a half million. Dollars. Well, uh, that, that will be with the new uh, PV system, ah. but uh, in the past, uh, uh, what, what I was saying, the past, uh, in the last few years, we all the all the changes and and everything that that we had done over here, we have saved, I would say, a good uh, about a hundred and forty thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. saved just on uh, energy efficiency changing the chiller, and installing the, the two PV systems. Mm -hmm. And that savings, this is the beauty of energy efficiency and renewables, is it keeps, it's a gift that keeps on giving year after year after year after year. And when you maintain the equipment the way you are, the, that savings does not go down because the equipment does not uh, degrade. It's uh, kind of like keeping your automobile all tuned up. You, a lot that, of people take their car that, in every every six yeah, months. Yeah, that, that's correct. And, and it's yeah. a one point right there, actually, that I wanted to make, is that when you call the plumber or electrician on emergency, it's 160 to $180 an hour Ooh, when they respond yeah, in emergency. Yeah. But if you can call them to come mm -hmm, in five days mm -hmm, or ten mm -hmm. days later, that is going to cost you 60 to $80 an hour. Yep, yep. I, I, I speak from personal experience uh, with, with that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we all have that experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it makes a big difference when you get into an emergency. And, you know, same thing for your car. You know, you do, main, do maintenance mm -hmm. to your car and, you know, you pay the yep. price when you go into an emergency yep. uh, broke, a breakdown. And we've got to wrap up. I think you've got a slide on how can you support Cameron Center? Yeah, okay. yeah, thank you uh, very much, Howard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is pretty much uh, what it is. Uh, you know, if people is interested to learn more, they can mm -hmm. give us a call at 244-5546, uh, or they can visit our, our webpage at jwcameroncenter.org. And, you know, same thing, if they want to make a donation, they can visit our webpage or give us a call or stop by. Sure. Yeah, yeah it, uh, it's an interesting place to visit, right there in, in Kahului. And with that, we've got to uh, wrap up. Cesar, thank you so much. This has really, really been uh, fascinating. You know, if we could replicate you and your, your building management, we would much, much more quickly reach 100% uh, clean energy by the year 2045. Again, muy mahalos, Cesar, and talk to you later. Think Tech Thank Hawaii, you. Thank you for that. Code Green.